So let's take a look at section 5.3, and we're going to look at a few more formulas and relationships with categorical variables and how we can calculate some probabilities. So our objectives here, the first one is to find conditional, what are known as conditional probabilities. Conditional probabilities. And we'll have a formula to help us do that, or we'll be able to use a chart. And I'll show you an example here. Uh, determine if events are independent, so independent, sorry about the small space here, independent or associated, and use the probabilities to determine if an association may exist. So all of what we're looking at are categorical variables, and we're looking at, you know, if you flip a coin, does it land on heads or tails? That's categorical data, how many times it lands on heads versus how many times it lands on tails. So we're looking for relationships between these categorical variables, and that's what we're going to use these probabilities to help us figure out. Let's start with what we mean by conditional probability. So a measure of the probability of an event, given that another event, so another event has occurred. So if we know one event has happened, what is the probability that another event will occur based on knowing that that first event has happened. The probability of event A given event B, the notation for it, let me write it down here. It's the probability of A, and then we use a line, given, given that we know B has occurred. That's the notation we use for conditional probability. So let's look at an example. Consider the following table that shows the highest educational level and income category for a random sample of full-time, should say full-time workers. So what do we have here? We know on the in the first column here, we've got their salary information. So they're either low income, average income, or high income. And then in the row at the top, we're talking about their education levels, either less than high school, so I guess they dropped out of high school, high school only, so they're graduates and that's it, of high school, or college or something higher. So those are the three classifications for their education level. So this is a contingency table, remember, is the name for this. And we've got our totals going along the bottom and along the side. The question says, is there an association between the highest education level and income category? In other words, are the proportions of average income different for various levels of education? For example, are college educated more or less likely to be high income earners than somebody who is high school educated? Find the probability that a person is of high income given that the person is college educated. So notationally, let's do this. I'm going to call it the probability that they are uh, high income. I'm going to use HI to represent high income given that they are college educated. I'll use C for that. So make sure you understand the notation. Probability they are high income given that we know they are college educated. So here's the way you're going to think about this. Instead of looking at the entire sample of 406 people, you're only going to look at those who are college educated. So you're going to restrict yourself to the people in this column. We don't care about people who are in any of the other categories. We want to stick to people who are college educated. So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I think it's easiest actually, strangely enough, if you start with the denominator of the fraction. Your total would be the total number of people who are in the given category. So in this case, that would be college educated. So out of the 181 people who are college educated, how many of them are high income? And that would be 77. So given that they are college educated, so of those 181 college educated people, how many are high income? 77. Okay, let's look at the next example. Find the probability of a person who is low income, given that the person only has a high school education. So this time, we're, let's write, write the notation first. The probability that a person is low income, so I'm going to use LI for low income, given that they only have a high school education. I'm going to use um, HS for high school. So this time, we're looking at the category of people that are high school educated. So let's look at the group of people who are high school educated. So let's go back up here, and let's erase this stuff. So the group of people that are high school educated is our given category. So we're looking at the people who are high school only. That's the category we're interested in. So that would be this column right here in the middle. 
So of the people who are high school educated, so how many people are we talking about? That's going to be our denominator. The total number of people who are high school educated is 110. Of the people who are high school educated, how many are low income? That would be the 58 in that first row right there. So 58 out of the 110 are going to be high school educated. Of the high school educated, 58 are low income. So the probability that somebody is low income, given that we know they're high school educated, is 58 out of 110. Part C says find the probability that a person has less than a high school education, given that the person is high income. So let's write down first the notation. The probability that somebody is less than, I'm going to use the word less, less than high school, given that they are high income. So after the words given that, that's the second part. So this time we are restricting ourselves to people who are high income earners. So let's go back up here and let me erase what we've got. So the ones who are high, school, or high income earners, that means we're looking at this row right here. So that's going to be our given that part. So we're only looking at the people who are high income. So your denominator is going to first be that total. So that's 109, right? See where that's coming from over here. And then of the people who are high income, how many of them are less than high school educated? And that would be this little group right here. So there are 12 people who are high income in that subgroup. So our probability there would be 12 out of the 109. All right, let's take a look at the next, next section. It says, given that versus and. So this is an important distinction. Um, when we talk about and, that means the, person's ha the person we're talking about or event has to be in both categories. So for example, the probability that somebody is high income and college educated. That would be the intersection of the people who are high income and college educated. I'm going to make a quick little uh, Venn diagram. You've probably seen these before to show you what I mean visually. So if I wanted the probability that somebody is high income and college educated, that would be the intersection of those two events. Okay, so that would be right here. And what that means is relative to the entire sample how many people are high income and college educated. On the other hand, if we see the phrase high income, given that somebody is college educated, that's a little bit different. That means we're looking only at the number of people who are college educated. So in this example, that would be if we looked at our college educated group, of those college educated people, how many are also high income? The difference really is um, the denominator of the fraction. When you see the word given that, your denominator is going to be restricted to the people that are in that category. So for example, the people that are only college educated. Of the people who are college educated, how many are high income? So here, let's figure out these probabilities in the next example. Part A, the probability that somebody is high income and college educated. So notationally, I'm going to give you a new notation here. I don't think I've shown you this in any of the videos yet, but we can use the word and, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you may also see this notation. So somebody that is high income and college educated, sometimes we use this symbol. It means the intersection, somebody who's college educated. So go back to the, the chart. That would be from the entire sample. Let me erase this. From the entire sample, how many people are both college educated and high income. So that means we're looking for the intersection, college educated and high income. So that would be those 77 people right there relative to the entire sample. So this would be 77 out of 406. Now let's read the next part. The probability that somebody is high income given that we know they are college educated. So what's the difference here? Am I going to look at the entire sample of 406 people? No, I'm only going to look at the people who are college educated. So let's go back. So the people who are college educated this time, that would be 181 people. Of that group, how many are also high income? 77. So my, my probability here would be out of the 181 people who are college educated, 77 are high income. So you see the difference. The numerators are the same, but the denominators are really what's different because you're looking at different total groups.
The first example, you're looking at the entire group. The second example, you're restricting yourself to just the people who are college educated. Let's look at the next part, calculating conditional probabilities. So we have a formula here that we can use to calculate conditional probabilities when they don't give us a table. Now, in the previous example, we had a table, and it's much easier to work with the table. But if they don't give you the table, we have a formula here we can use. And so if the contingency table is not given, we can still compute the conditional probability using this formula. So the formula looks like this. The probability of A given B can be found by the probability of A and B divided by the probability of event B. And I really want to make a really important point here. The only time you're going to use this is if the contingency table is not given. If the contingency table is given, like it was in this example, you're going to do it just the way we did. You're going to look at the, the table and you're going to isolate the groups you're interested in. This is only for if the, if the table is not given. So let's just for demonstration purposes, let's look at the same question, but let's, or the same data here, but let's compute it both ways, once using the table and once using the formula. So it says, using the contingency table, Compute the probability that somebody is low income. It says, and less than high school. I think this has a typo here. Um, this should be given that. So cross that out and do your little given that line. So the probability here, I'll write it down here. The probability that somebody is low income given that they have less than a high school education. So let's first compute this using the contingency table. And actually, if you have the contingency table, this is much faster. So what does this mean? We're going to restrict ourselves to the, the given condition that they are have less than a high school education. So let's go back to the table. How many people in our group have less than a high school education? That would be this 115 right here. So that's going to be the denominator of my fraction. The numerator would be the people who are, have, are low income from that group. And that would be the 62 people right there. So it is 62 out of 115 would be that probability. Now, for the next part, using the probability formula. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the probability. So let's see, let's write it out. So it's the probability that somebody is low income and has less than a high school education divided by the probability that they have less than a high school education. Um, and I've got very little room on the bottom of my screen here, and I want to make sure you see what I'm writing. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to write it. I'm going to write everything up here. So the probability that somebody is low income and less than a high school education, that numerator part would be the probability relative to the entire group. So go back to the table here. Relative to the entire group, how many people are low income and have less than a high school education? That would be 62 out of the total 406. So let's write that. That would be 62 out of the total 406. That's the top part, the numerator here. The bottom part, the denominator, would be the probability that somebody has less than a high school education relative to the entire sample. So somebody has less than a high school education, that would be 115 out of the 406. So 115, let me erase some of this, 115 out of the 406. So what we have here is a complex fraction, and you may remember from algebra, to simplify a complex fraction, you flip, you use the reciprocal, and you multiply. So I'm going to multiply the top by 406 over 115, and that gets rid of this. And notice the 406 is cancel, and so what does that leave me with? That leaves me with 62 out of 115. Notice that's the same thing I got over here in example A. Those should be the same whether you use the formula or you use the table. However, which one was faster? Certainly the first way was faster using the table. So if you have a table, use the table to find the conditional probabilities. Stick to the formula only if you don't have a table. All right, let's go on. Let's talk about independent events. So A and B are considered independent. So A and B are considered independent, independent events if the occurrence of A does not affect the probability for the occurrence of B and vice versa. Um, the probability of flipping a coin on one flip and then turning around and flipping the coin a second time, the probability of landing heads on the first versus heads on the second, those would be considered independent because the first flip should have no impact on the second flip. 
Symbolically, A and B are independent if the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. So let's look at an example. Suppose a card is drawn from a standard deck of playing cards. Let C be the event that a card is a club, and B be the event that the card is black. Are these events independent? Well, how could we check this out? The way we could tell if they are independent is if this formula is true for those two events. So what we would want to show is we would want to show that the probability of getting a club given that the card is black would have to equal the probability of selecting a club. So what is the probability of getting a, car, a club given that we know the card is black? So on the left side, start with the denominator. How many black cards are there in the deck? That would be half the deck, so there's 26. Of those 26, two are going to be clubs. Versus the probability of selecting a club relative to the entire deck. Well, there's 52 cards in the deck. There are 13 cards in the deck that are clubs. So 13 out of 52 would be the probability of selecting a club. And so are these two, two fractions equal to each other? No, they are not. So what does that tell us that tells us that the events are associated? And if you think about a deck of cards, that has to make sense because you can't get a club without it being a black card. All the clubs in the deck are black. If you don't remember that from a deck of cards, it's not a big deal. But if you do remember what a deck of cards looks like, that should make sense. So if this relationship does not hold, then that tells you that the events are associated. If that relationship does work, then the events are independent. Let's look at another example. Using the contingency table from earlier, are the events a person selected has a high school only education and a person selected is of low income? Are those independent? So what does that mean? We want, we want the probability that a person has a high school only education given that we know they are low income that needs to equal, what does that need to equal from the formula? That needs to equal the first event there, the probability that somebody has a high school only education. So let's go ahead and figure that out. So the probability that somebody has a high school only education given that they are low income, let's go back to this chart. So of the group that is low income, there are, uh, let's see, 164 people. Of that group, 58 have a high school only education. So this first fraction would be 58 out of 164. Does that equal the probability that somebody has a high school only education relative to the whole sample? So the probability that somebody has a high school only education relative to the whole sample is 110 out of 406. So 110 out of 406. And if you compute the decimal values for these two things, you will see that they are not equal which means the events are not independent. So we can say that they are associated.